Now, these aren't 100% accurate, right? They're... Well, you'd be surprised how accurate they are. They can tell fairly easily if someone's lying or not. Did you fly on an airplane today? Yes, I did. Did we eat pot roast for dinner tonight? Yes. Have you ever watched pornographic videos? I never thought those things were accurate. Yes, no. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today we're making a major miter saw upgrade. And this upgrade is all about precision and accuracy. You see, this tool's been around for a while, but I've mainly seen it being used by carpenters. But is this thing good for a woodworker? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. So we're obviously going to be spending a lot of time over at the miter saw today. And that's okay, because it's probably my second favorite tool in my shop. You see, the miter saw, or the chop saw if you're nasty, Jackson, if you're nasty, is one of the tools that I think is an essential part of any woodworker's shop. It's a tool that gets used on almost every single project, and that's because it's great at breaking down lumber or making those final cuts, as well as those angle cuts that are a little bit more difficult to do at the table saw. Now in my shop, I've got two miter saws that I use on a regular basis. The first miter saw is this Festool Capex. But you're not going to need a fancy miter saw like that for this upgrade. You can use many brands like DeWalt, Bosch, Milwaukee, and many others. And I plan on using this tool on both miter saws. And that's one thing that I really liked about this tool. I can use it at one miter saw and then set it up at the other without a whole lot of setup. You could also take this thing to a job site if you need it. So what is this tool? How does it work? And how can it be used in the woodworking shop? So this tool is the Recon M1 Caliber. Let's unbox this and see how it works. So first off, I want to say that I've watched a couple of videos on how to set this tool up and it appears that it's a breeze to set up. Not only that, but calibration is easy. And a lot of these videos say that we can kiss our tape measure goodbye. I don't believe that. So interestingly enough, this tool comes in a hard styrofoam case. And inside the box, there's really nothing other than the tool itself. So before we take a look at this tool, I did want to mention that you are going to need a couple of AA batteries as they don't come included. So I had to make a trip to Wally World to pick up a couple. So let's take a quick look at the tool itself. You can see there's three buttons at the very top and we'll explain what those do in just a moment. There's also a swing arm at the bottom that easily lowers and raises and stays into place when raised. If we turn it around, you can see the clamping system. It clamps down by pulling these two knobs and there's a release button which is this yellow tab on the back. To install the batteries on this tool, we'll place the tool on its side and we unscrew this knob at the very top. Then we can place our batteries in. With the batteries installed, I now can go over to the miter saw and I can show you how easily this thing is to install. For most of us, we're going to want to take the fence and move it over so that we have plenty of room for this tool to fit on your saw. Once that's done, we can begin to start thinking about how we're going to clamp this tool to our fence. And if you take a closer look, you can see how the two jaws come together and clamp onto that fence. You squeeze it together using the two tabs. If you want to release the jaw, you simply squeeze this yellow tab on the bottom. So we'll slide the tool over the fence and pull the two tabs until it's locked into place. Once it's locked into place, we can lower the arm until it's in contact with the table. Now that the tool is mounted to the fence, we can begin to start the calibration process. So in order to start the calibration process, we need to find a piece of wood that's dead straight, and it has to be longer than six feet long. So you'll need to eyeball a piece of wood, and you can use a two x four. You just wanna make sure there's no bow in the wood or any curve whatsoever. So now it's time to go into the calibration mode of this tool, and you're going to want to make sure that the tool is off for this procedure. You're going to want to press and hold the left button and the center button, and then press the right button one time. And this will put you in calibration mode. With the M1 reading calibration zero, you're going to want to push your wood until the wood is past your saw blade. And then you're going to want to make a fresh cut on this piece of wood. Once that cut is complete, you're going to press the zero button, which is on the left hand side. Now it's time to grab that tape measure in either a very sharp pencil or something like a marking knife and measure six feet from where you just made that cut down the length of the board. So you'll take your tape measure, hook it on the end of the board and measure down six feet exactly. 
So now that we've made that marking, we want to push the wood to the right hand side of the miter saw. Once we find the marking at the six feet, we want to make sure that that marking is on the left hand side of the blade. So we'll slowly slide the wood to the right. So hopefully you can see here, I've got my laser line turned on and it's perfectly matched up with my pencil line. Once we feel comfortable with all of our alignments, we now can press the very left button, which is the zero button. And now we should be calibrated. So before we do anything else, we need to do something that's critically important. We need to let the machine know the thickness of our blade or the blade curve. And that's because the right hand side of the cut will be the piece that we're measuring. So we need to account for the blade curve when making our cuts. So we need to let the tool know what this blade curve is. Then it can offset its calculation by the blade curve. So in order to do this, we need to press the middle button for five seconds, and this will put us into blade setup mode. Once we're in blade setup mode, we can place a piece of wood underneath the wheel and we can adjust the blade curve back or forth to whatever the blade is in our miter saw. In my case, it's 1 8. So once this is adjusted, I can press the button on the left to set it. So if you go to a lot of reviews about this product, you'll find a lot of people complaining that this thing is an eighth of an inch off. Well, guess what? A blade kerf is typically an eighth of an inch. So my guess is people are not calibrating this tool to account for the blade kerf. So now that we have the tool calibrated for the blade kerf as well as its measurements, I wanna make some cuts. I wanna make a two inch, a four inch, a six inch, and a 12 inch cut and see how this measures up. So the first thing that I need to do is do a fresh cut on the end of this material. Once I've done that, I can zero it out by pressing the left button. Now it's important to show at this point that this tool is now accounting for the blade curve. You can see the negative sign and the 1 8th. So I'm gonna make each one of these cuts consecutively. In between each cut, I'm gonna press the zero button and then move the wood over to the desired measurement. So I don't know if you saw that, but when I was making my very first cut with this machine, I inadvertently moved the wood and it went from two inches to two and one sixteenth of an inch. So I'm guessing I'm gonna be a little bit off on that cut, but let's take a look at each one of these cuts and see how they measure up. So here are the four cuts that we just made. So let's measure up each one and I'll show you what they read. If we look at the two inch one, which is the one that moved on me, we're actually just a little bit over two inches. So I'm guessing my movement of the wood caused that little discrepancy. If we look at the four inch cut, it's dead on four inches. The six inch, once again, dead on six inches. Lastly, the 12 inch. And it doesn't get more perfect than that. Perfect. Well, I'm pretty impressed with that, especially since I did all those cuts consecutively and I didn't have to use a tape measure to lay out any lines. The one thing that I did learn, however, is you really want to firmly hold down your workpiece to the miter saw fence. As you saw from my two inch cut, I moved it just a little bit and you can see from the measurements, I was off a bit. And just to confirm that it was a user error and not a tool error, I want to cut off another two inch piece of wood and see if it measures up. And this new piece I cut is dead on right at two inches. So now that we've taken a look at making a bunch of different size cuts consecutively, I now wanna do some repetitive cuts. I wanna make four four inch cuts and see how they stack up. So in the same fashion, I'm gonna zero this out and then make four cuts at four inches. So let's take a look at these cuts on my table saw as this is one of the most flat surfaces in my shop. And as you can see from here, there's a little bit of variance in between each one of these cuts. Now don't freak out. Ah, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. That's right, Beavis. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For once yeah. I'm not gonna say settle down, Beavis. Yeah. And that's how you take care of that. 
I know this tool cost a lot of money to have those type of variances. However, each one of those variances was less than a sixteenth of an inch. And the reason you shouldn't freak out is because I had this thing set up on fractions of an inch. And this thing only goes to sixteenth of an inch when using the fractions mode. So let's go take a look at the tool and I'll show you some of the other modes. So if we press the middle button, we can go from inches with fractions to centimeters to millimeters to meters and even inches with decimal points. And this goes out to one one hundredth of an inch. So for those of us that use Imperial and are woodworkers, we need a little bit more accuracy. So I suggest not using the fraction setting, but instead using the decimal setting. When people talk about decimals, they're talking about numbers that are only parts of a whole. Now let's make four more cuts at four inches using the decimal setting. So here's the four cuts that we made with the Imperial setting and you can see some of them jut up just a little bit more than others. And I actually did six cuts using the decimal system and this is dead flat. I can barely feel those seams at all. So now that I know I need to use the decimal setting when making cuts, now I want to make some longer cuts and see how accurate that is. So I'm going to grab this longer board and make a six foot cut, take a tape measure to it and see how accurate it is. So I'll clean up one of these edges, zero it out, and then move it over six feet. Well, you can't help stupid. I actually cut this down to five foot. I did the math in my head and I thought six times 12 was 60 inches. So this is cut at five feet. Let's go measure it. Idiot. So I'll take my tape measure, hook it on the very end of this board, carry it over and you can see I'm right at 60 inches exactly. So that's a perfect cut. So I'm pretty impressed so far. We've shown that we can cut different measurements consecutively. We can cut shorter measurements as well as longer measurements. Now let's see if we can cut some round material. So I don't have a whole lot of round material in my shop, but I did find this small piece of PVC piping. I'm going to cut three, three inch pieces and see how it measures up. So in the same fashion, you can see how that wheel cradles the round material, just like the square material. And when cutting round material, we're going to do the same thing, straighten up one edge and zero it out. Then we can make the consecutive three inch cuts. And here I have the three pieces of pipe that I just cut and I can't tell any difference between any of these three pipes. And the measurement is dead on at three inches exactly. So now that we know we can cut round material with this device, let's see if we can do some miters. So cutting miters really is pretty easy. Once you've cut your first miter, you then lower the blade. Then you push your wood up until it hits the blade. Once you've got that aligned, you press the zero button and now you're ready to cut the miter. In this case, I'm going to do a four inch miter. Go big or go home. And if we take that miter cut and measure it, you can see that's right at four inches exactly. Well, I'm pretty impressed with this tool. As long as you take the time to calibrate this thing correctly, this thing is putting out really accurate cuts and that's what it's all about. The last thing that I want to do today is I want to take that recon off the Fest tool, put it on my DeWalt and see how long it takes to calibrate this tool. So I'm going to press start on this amazingly oversized stopwatch and we're going to see how long it takes. And that literally only took two minutes and 38 seconds to transfer the tool, calibrate the length, as well as the kerf of the blade. The only thing left to do is to see how well this cuts. And here I'm going to do a 12 inch cut. And if I break out my tape measure, you can see that we're exactly at 12 inches. 
So don't let any of those reviews tell you that this thing isn't accurate. This thing seems to be perfectly accurate in my opinion. I suspect that many of the errors that people are getting are from not setting up the calibrations appropriately. And I have no biased opinion on this. I have no affiliation with Recon and I purchased this tool for myself. Well, I hope you enjoyed checking out some of the features of this Recon M1. I really enjoyed showing you how to calibrate this tool and how accurate it is. I'm going to leave links in the description below so you can go check out this tool for yourself. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.